This is the Think Small ad from Doyle Dane Birnbach, also known as DDB. And it is a great emblem of the creative revolution that DDB started in advertising in the late 50s and early 60s. DDB was a Jewish ad agency, backing it up to Doyle Dane Birnbach was their full name. Bill Birnbach was the president. He was given the title of the president really because they flipped a coin for whose name would come first and his name came last. He lost the coin toss, so as a concession they made him president of the firm. But he was more than that, he was the creative director. And before Doyle Dane Birnbach, um, if you were Jewish you had to work either at a Jewish ad agency or not in advertising at all. Um, ad agencies didn't want you working on their accounts, clients didn't want to work in, um, on those accounts. So there was ad agencies like Gray Advertising and that were Jewish ad agencies that focused mostly on Garment Center uh, clients. And they left Gray Advertising with 12 other people and started DDB. Bill Birnbach believed in the power of great creative. He paired art directors and creatives, uh, copywriters together to, uh, it was like a one plus one equals three. That good copywriter could bounce ideas and visual ideas off the art director and the art director could bounce copywriting and headlines off of the copywriter. You know, before the copywriter was really the boss, he would sort of write the headlines and then sort of slip it under the door for the art director to make pretty. So Birnbeck put them together. But more than that, he didn't care about the pedigree. He, did, he just wanted talent. So instead of having to be a wasp, a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, and go to the right schools and have the right connections to work in the business, he attracted people from Pratt and Parsons and all these talented people from New York City, the gorgeous mosaic. A lot of them didn't even graduate high school, much less go to the right college. And he became a real magnet for those creative types. Volkswagen is a great example of what he did. You can look at this particular ad. First of all, think about what Volkswagen was. It was the Nazi car, right? The symbol of the, not the Socialist Party in Germany. It was small. It was ugly. It was underpowered. And this was in the age in America when you know, see America first, it was the larger cars with the big fan tails. So they come out with an ad like this where the, the visual is off center, it's small, it's black and white, and they're telling you to, to think small instead of it's counter to the entire advertising of automobiles that was going on at the time. And a great example of Doyle Dane Birnbach advertising. Another Volkswagen ad that's a great example of the creativity in, exhibited by Doyle Dane Birnbach. Headline says, we finally came up with a beautiful picture of a Volkswagen. There's no product shot in the whole ad. There's no shot of the Volkswagen. Plus, they're making fun of themselves again. That self-effacing humor finally came up with a beautiful picture. You look at it, and what is it? It's tire tracks in the snow. So the benefit comes through very clearly. A Volkswagen is wonderful in the snow and no product in the shot. And by the way, it takes a lot of cojones by the client to approve this shot. They want to see their product. They want to show their product. And here Doyle Dane Birnbach has come and said, we're going to sell the Volkswagen and we're not even going to show the product. For Avis, number two-ism, the Avis Manifesto. You have to remember when this ad came out in the 60s. It was not long after the Red Scare and the Communist Red Scare and people were afraid the Communists had infiltrated America not long after the Cuban Missile Crisis with Russia when we have become on the brink of war with communism and with Russia and look at this ad look at the risks that DDB is taking look at what they're the analogy they're making the Avis manifesto an obvious homage to the communist manifesto um, look at the hammer and sickle look where they've got like the you know the the tire iron and the hammer in that hammer and sickle look taking a lot of risks and look at the whole copy even the last line number twos of the world arise just like you know workers of the world unite Avis is another example case history of Doyle Dane Birnbach and the creative revolution you know Avis came to DDB and said you know they were on the verge of bankruptcy and they said, will you take our account and help us out and do something? And DDB said, yeah, sure, we'll do you on two conditions. Number one, you pay your bills up front because otherwise you'll declare bankruptcy and stick us with a bunch of unpaid media bills. And number two, you have to do exactly what we say. So they said, okay. 
And Avis came out with this campaign, or DDB on behalf of Avis came out with this campaign. And nobody had ever done anything like this before, to, to publicly say, we're number two. We're not the biggest, we're not the best, we're number two. Truth was, they weren't number two. Um, they were way down the list. But what it did is it turned it into an Avis versus Hertz uh, competition. Hertz was number one. And this campaign really didn't hurt hurts all that much, but it hurt everybody else, the dollars and budgets and Alamo and all the other rent-a-car companies because you came to rent a car and you either went with Hertz because you went with number one or you went with Hertz number two, Avis, because they tried harder. So it became a one versus two, Avis versus Hertz sort of situation. A great, great positioning that we're number two and we try harder. A lot of DDB's early clients were Jewish being as DDB had its roots as a Jewish ad agency, El Al, the National Airline of Israel, is a good example. And look at the innovative art direction they're taking here. In those days, uh, taking an air, you never wanted to show water in an airline ad. You mean flying over the ocean was a real risk. I mean, Pan Am Airlines was dropping about one a week into the drink there. People, their slogan was PAA, go all the way with PAA, and people would joke and say, go halfway to PAA, the only airline with a scheduled stop between here and Hawaii. So landing in the water was a big uh, fear that people had flying. So what does DDB do? They show nothing but water in the entire ad, an ocean. And, um, you know, a threatening ocean, no less. They don't show an airline. They don't show the destination of Israel, the real benefit. They show the ocean. And then very interesting um, art direction where they ripped off 20% of it and with the headlines starting December 23rd the Atlantic Ocean will be 20% smaller El Al Airlines an example of the Jewish clients that were at Dordain Birnbach you don't have to be Jewish to love levies they ran a whole campaign with people who obviously weren't Jewish there's not too many black Jews unless you're Sammy Davis Jr. Great example of the headline and the visual working together. You never want your headline to repeat your visual or vice versa. Otherwise, you don't really need either one. They should work, have tension and work in combination with each other, like this. The ad doesn't work without the headline. The headline doesn't work without the visual. So here, this was run during the gas crisis. You can see the guy's committing suicide by putting the gas pump to his forehead. And the headline says, or buy a Volkswagen great great simple ad simple line art they didn't go and shoot it they didn't spend a lot of money in a prop and a set just a black and white drawing with a great four letter four word headline